We're playing all the new songs you want. WLMU 91.3. This is WLMU, Harrogate, Tennessee, broadcasting at 91.3 FM, streaming worldwide, 913thegap.com. And you can follow the radio station on Twitter if you like, and that's going to be at 913thegap. Uh, we're the Tri-State Paranormal Investigators. This is going to be the Paranormal Experience. Uh, it's Thursday night. What are you shaking your head about, Chris? No internet connection. That's it's the phone. That's what it is. Anyway, uh, as you have heard, we're the Tri-State Paranormal Investigators. With me, as always, is the lovely Chris, and we have John in with us tonight. How you doing, John? Doing pretty good, man. Great. And I'm Neil. So, um, speaking of the Twitter, um, it's kind of weird. Uh, but Chris sent me a message, and it didn't come up to uh, her name and asking for the Twitter account and password, and I didn't send it, obviously, because I didn't recognize the number. Mm. And then she comes to tell me it was her. So we have one as well, and uh, we'll get that uh, taken care of probably tonight. But uh, that's going to be uh, at Tri-State Spirits. That's what that is to follow us. Uh, if you'd like, you uh, you can have, if you have any questions or comments, you can uh, go to us on our Facebook page, and it's going to be www.facebook.com forward slash Tri-State Para. That's one word. Uh, you can uh, send us an email. Uh, we get a lot of emails. I mean, daily. We, we scan some emails, but uh, you can do so at uh, tristate underscore paranormal at yahoo.com. Or you can give us a call in here in radio, and that's going to be 423 869 6331. One more time, that's going to be 423 869 6331. So, uh, <clears throat> excuse me about that. It's still the aller- allergies have still got me, but, uh, and garden gnomes. They got me as well tonight, but, uh, <laughs> inside joke. Anyway, <laughs> Chris well, is like, it would definitely funny. be what? a good show tonight because there's definitely something dead going on around here. <laughs> anyway, um, we've got a very special show tonight. We have uh, William Tribble. Uh, he's he's been a friend of our a uh, friend of the of, of the show and us for uh, for a long time. We've had a show going on two years now, and uh, he's he's been a very active participant uh, with questions and comments and answering some things as well for us and. Uh, he is a poet, and uh, he's in uh, Budapest, Hungary. Uh, he's going to uh, Skype in tonight and uh, share one of his poems. And uh, probably after the first break, we'll take a break about eight fifteen, eight twenty or so, and then we'll have him call in afterwards. But it's a it's an absolutely like well, amazing story behind this uh, poem, and and the poem itself is was just beautifully written. I mean, he 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 does a great job at what he does, and. Um, it's 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 amazing. I just can't get over it now. The the backstory. I've actually heard several different variations of it myself. One John, being a Kentucky fan, was about eight off up as well. Oh and really? We and hopefully he can share that. He can shed the light on that as well. But yeah, there was one uh, variation of the story that involved eight off up as well. And uh, eight off up uh, for those who don't know is the very very well known uh, Kentucky basketball coach from forties fifties sixties. I believe that what it was. Yeah, forty nine through fifty three had the NCAA. Final Four. I mean, he will champion. He'll yeah, champion. He, he he's a legend here. But uh, yeah, we're gonna have him call in. But um, anyway, uh, I called into the to the lunch bunch today. Man, they do a really good job. Uh, I was actually uh, driving today for my work, and I was going somewhere, and I happened to turn it over and listen to it on ninety one three FM, and uh, called in, and I, I reminded everybody on here, and uh, and uh, AP and all of them, they they were very generous and letting me come on during their show, and. And uh, over the phone and talk with it about the show tonight. So it's going to be a very, very fun and very, very interesting show tonight. Um, so what's been going on, Chris? I mean, other than phone problems. I have been sick for three days. Oh, geez, really? Yeah, I think it's sinuses, though. Oh, that's no good. Uh, John, what about you, man? What's been going on with you? I started a new job and uh, taking care of an old truck I, I bought for le- next to nothing. <laughs> I think Rufus might like it. <laughs> I, 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 when you told me what it was, I was like, well, Rufus will try to steal it from you. Oh, yeah. Well. He's been a little on the dead side. <laughs> 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 anyway, you know, I was reading an article earlier, and um, I don't know if you guys have heard about this or not, but uh, they've, quote, unquote, not, well, they call it this. It's the, quote, unquote, gate to hell. But you guys hear about this? It's, it's, it, it was mm-hmm. in Italy. Mm-hmm. No, 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 Turkey. I'm sorry. Uh-uh. It was in Turkey. Well, basically what it is, is um, it's known as Pluto's Gate. So it's been around a long time. And, and something's, I mean, I can I can look into it here again in a minute and find out, but I was just speed reading through it, you know, because some of the more interesting things in the news. And uh, it, it, like, 
unbelievably hot gas spews from this cave always, and, and no one can go near it or around it or anything, and that's why they say it's the gates of hell, which is pretty neat. And 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 like I said, they they call it Pluto's Gate. Uh, it's in the uh, southwestern Turkey, and um, evidently some Italian archaeologists has uh, you know found this because it's, uh, they haven't found it in such a long time. It's been there, but uh, um, they, it was actually in the Greco-Roman you know stories and stuff, which is very neat. Now, I'm thinking about doing a show just on that itself in the near future, but I just wanted to touch on it tonight. It's just amazing, some of the stuff I mean, it's, that uh, people knew about in the past, and, and we, they've been lost either through, uh, I mean, just to quote Lord of the Rings, you know, <laughs> myth becomes legend, you know, legend, book, or wherever it goes, I can't remember how it goes exactly, but, you know, it's been forgotten about and finally found again. It's just amazing to me. It absolutely is, but... Just wonder how they... Stumble upon it again. Uh, it actually says in the article. I'm sort of like gazing through it now too. Uh, uh, here, here's one thing. It says this uh, space is full of uh, vapor, so misty and dense that it can uh, scarcely you can scarcely see it. Uh, see the ground. That's how bad it is. Uh, any animal that passes inside meets its instant death. Whoa, that's crazy. I mean, that just that just it's it's amazing to me. And we will. I'm, I'm really thinking about doing that. Uh, one of the guys said he actually, I don't know why he did this, but I mean, uh, we live in a, in a coal mining place, you know, and a lot of people mine coal here. And they've used birds and canaries and whatnot, you know, to see, and they put them down there with them in case gas bubbles, you know, went or whatever, because, you know, the bird's upper respiratory system is so, you know, like, acute that it picks up anything and he'll die, obviously, but it saves lives. But uh, one of these um, archaeologists said that uh, this is uh, quoted that, I threw a sparrow in and uh, then immediately breathed their last and it fell. It breathed its last breath and then fell. Wow. That's how quick it was. It was instant. It's amazing. I, don't, I, I mean, I, like I said, it, it goes on into a, basically about what it is. And uh, I'm going to, you know, read about it and I think we should do a complete show about it. But Yeah. I mean, I don't know. But you know what's been like raising a lot of like stink for us? Uh, well, not really stink. <clears throat> that's, a, that's a bad word to say i guess you could say it for that but what uh it's actually uh the pictures that that, that was that we talked about last week from uh mm-hmm. from uh josh his wife took the picture i mean a lot of people are just amazed by that picture uh, it's it's a wild looking picture it really is it's uh, this is the first time you've seen it right yeah i, mean, I thought this was the first time you seen it. what did you think when you first seen it? i mean john I instantly john's one of the guys that looks for you know if he if he goes on our investigations he's one of the people that go through the photos so he's he's really a, he's, he's good at looking at this you know he looks at it and as soon as he's seen the picture because i see something right there and then i showed him the blow up picture what do you think when you first seen this it blew me away at first i i didn't know whether it was a i don't man or like a small little creature like thing it was wild looking it took my took me back for a second when i looked at it Chris, what was you telling me that uh, you were talking to some of the family members? What was what was said? Um, apparently, their grandfather passed away, and they seem to think that maybe that's him, like a guardian angel watching over their gra- his grandson that was in the accident. Oh, well, that's neat. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, who did you talk to about that? Um, actually, the the boy's sister was telling um, my daughter that. And she actually thanked me on Facebook for sending the picture to him. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Well, that's great. I don't. I, I don't know what it. Is. I, I really can't say what it is for sure. I can't. I don't know. Uh, I don't. And there's been a lot of uh, speculations, of course. But there's nothing ground and solid that we can say what it is. But I mean, like I said, it's very amazing. And if anybody's you know curious about it, they can find it on our Facebook. Uh, I've got the uh, the long picture of it. I've got a blown up picture. Then I have a picture that was used <coughs> that I used some of our equipment on that. Uh, isolates a lot of things you know the greenery and <clears throat> the woods and whatnot you know so it's just it's just amazing so what's really good about it too it's like in the daytime i mean you can really see it really clear i mean it's not it's not really transparent that's what's crazy about it it's like somebody actually standing there it's an amazing picture oh, i'm sorry I'll, I'll just if you want to go ahead and talk i actually got a message here i believe and i'm trying to find it and the computer is slow well, or something. Well, I think that no matter what it is, if it gives a family comfort, then that's well, fine. Absolutely. So, everybody, that's like telling a story and going around a circle. Right. 
you know and each time it's told it's different everybody sees different things in the picture when I first when I first seen it when I first laid my eyes on it it looked like an old man it really did you could see the gray in his beard and all that it's an amazing picture yeah I see this standing there with his arms down looking to see looking straight ahead well when I first saw it I thought maybe it looked like a lady back in the 1800s with a long dress on but you know and then when I got home and I looked on the computer screen, then it looked different than it did on the <clears throat> phone. Oh yeah, it's it's totally different. Yes. You know, I mean, the so computer screens is just I mean, it's just you can so see much it better. Yeah. Yes. I mean, you can look at it on the phone, but I mean, if you have one of the smartphones, like like you know, I got an iPhone. Chris has an iPhone, but at the time she had uh, one of the was it some kind smartphone, of a, a yeah. smartphone or you know a cheap smartphone, and I could see it really good on my iPhone. And a lot of people seen it really good, you know, they had the really big smartphones like the droids, the DNAs and all that, you know, so they could see it really well. Right. <clears throat> Actually, this uh, message is from uh, Amos Janeway. He's listening tonight. Thanks for listening. He says, uh, this was about the bombing. He says, uh, what about the Saudis that uh, were originally blamed for the bombings? And within hours, they retracted the statement and the guy uh, that the guy was on a plane back in Saudi Arabia. That's actually a pretty good question there. I, I, I have not heard that. I did not hear that. I, I didn't know that was going on, so I appreciate that. And then he goes on to talk about that, uh, the gate to hell. It says, uh, uh, about the gateway to hell, the gas uh, that is coming up from the ground is highly concentrated methane, so so much so that the oxygen within 10 feet of the entrance is pushed completely out. So thank you for that, Amos, and thanks for listening tonight. So, um, <clears throat> Actually, no, I know him, Amos. Yeah, I used to work with the call center. Oh, yeah? Okay. Yeah. Well, that's good. Um, good guy. <clears throat> Well, with that, let's go ahead and take us a break so I can go ahead and get through this and try to see what's going on with the computer. It's slow. I don't know what's going on with it. I told you there was something going on. Yeah, there is something going on. I'm I'm sorry for even doubting you. But uh, anyway, uh, let's go ahead and take us a break. We'll be right back here in just a moment. Uh, This is the Paranormal Experience on 91.3 to get. We'll be right back. Hey guys, welcome back to Paranormal Experience on 91.3 The Gap. Sorry for the long pause. We're having a lot of technical difficulties. Uh, We actually went ahead and had uh, William Kyle in, so he's on the hold right now. But uh, just because of the technical difficulties, I don't know what else we can do about it. We'll probably go ahead and uh, work with uh, William and let him uh, talk a little bit to us. And then we may go ahead and close it out because of these difficulties. But uh, let me see if I can bring him on the phone here real quick. Let's see. Hey, William, are you there? Yeah, hello. Hey, how's it going? Very well, very well. Um, how are you guys? Oh, we're doing great. How are, how are you? Pretty well. Um, I heard uh, Chris say when you started, uh, she was a little under the weather, and I, I've had a I've had a little bit of the same. So. No. Oh, okay. But okay. otherwise, otherwise, all is good. Yeah. Wonderful. Wonderful. So, um, tell us a little bit about yourself, William. You, like I said, you've been a friend of ours for as long as we've had the show. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, your, uh, I guess your 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 writing and whatnot. Yeah. Well, um, well I'm I'm from Kentucky. Um, I grew up. I grew up near the place uh, Bergen in Harrodsburg. I spent a lot of my youth there, where where the poem, uh, where the story comes from, that the poem is about that you guys are playing today. And um, my family comes from Middlesboro originally. Uh, one one generation removed. Uh, my grandparents still live there, or did, you know. So I spent a lot of time there, and. Um, see uh as a writer um, i'm a poet and uh yeah i write i write poetry I, i've been in a, a lot of magazines no books out yet but um i plan to this year i'm coming back to america i've, I've been in budapest for four and a half years now okay europe europe totally four and a half years now and um i'm having one last hurrah i'm going to uh, denmark and sweden and uh, coming back, yeah. Sounds like right. fun. Yeah, hey, well, when you come back, let us know. We'll have you come in the studio and you can talk again. How's that? Very cool. Yeah, I'd love it. I've been listening to you guys, like you said, since the beginning. And I think it's great because um, um, since I left America, you know, and I, I was overseas so long, I started um, looking at where I came from more than I had when I lived there, you know, and, and studying history and and. Uh, per- everything, things going on in the past and the present, and, and that's when I came across you guys, and I thought it was great. You know, yeah. I actually lived in Harrisburg for about three years. Did you? Yes. 
it, it's a good town, it, and uh, I, I grew. Let's see, I, I well, when was I there? I guess the eighties, nineties, early nineties, and um, I moved to Frankfurt. Uh, I guess when I was about eighteen, so I, I spent my formative years, let's say, okay. in um, Harrodsburg. I think it's probably in the nineties when I lived there. Oh wow! Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Very cool. And I went to all the schools. I, I was in uh, Bergen uh, for elementary, and I, I went to Harrodsburg and Mercer County for um, high school. Okay, William, well, how about uh, sharing this tale with us? Uh, tell us the, the story of this. Like I said, I was talking with John earlier and throughout the day that I've heard several different variations of this as well. Uh, the one I heard was about Adolf Rupp as well. But if you, if you don't mind, could you go ahead and uh, tell us the story? Sure. Uh, well, like you say, there, there's uh, a few stories, and they're all conjecture. They're all um, even even the the Rupp story is is always followed with un, undocumented or un, you know unproven that right. it happened. But um, his story, I, I think, his is the most interesting because he, sixty years after the fact, was the one who claimed uh, to um, have solved it. You see, um, the girl whoever she was because it's still a matter of conjecture like I say there's there's people that will argue four or five different different points to the story but she signed in at, at well first of all she was at the um, well let's see first of all uh, Dr. Graham um, Christopher Columbus Graham it was, was a very famous man in his day but lost the time he was like he was like a little bit of everything. He was in all the wars of his day. He lived to be 101. And um, he was a early archeologist. He dug at um, Boone County for mammoths in the uh, mid 1800s for a museum in Louisville, which was, you know, it's pretty early for that kind of thing, that kind of thought. Right. And um, he was involved in health and like Kellogg, he was like a, a precursor to Kellogg or maybe at around the same time Kellogg started that. But he opened the Health Spring Hotel in Harrodsburg, which is now, I think, called Young's Park. And the buildings are all gone. And the only thing that's left is this young girl's grave and, and you know, a park. But anyway, he, um, he built the hotel, and, and it, was, it was a health resort. And people came from all over the world and country to uh, drink the mineral water. And then later it was it was the Harrodsburg Hotel, I think, and that's when the girl came. And Rupp's story says that a, a man came to him, and this is 60 years after the fact, but said he had had a, um, a wife who danced herself to death in um, Harrodsburg, Kentucky, and his name was Adams, and um, he came from Laurel County. Okay. Yes. And um, other stories, she signed her name William Virginia Stafford, which was the daughter of a judge, or claiming to be a daughter of a judge in Louisville. But he had no, this man had no daughter named Virginia, and he was a um, well documented person, obviously, being a judge. So, and, uh, so no one knew who this uh, lady was, right? Exactly, exactly. And it, it all, it was a big story of its day. You know, it was, it was one of those. Um, that, that everybody knew, everybody had heard, and like you were talking about, Ralph, he was the one supposedly solved. He was a prominent person, and he he supposedly um, solved it by um, his his story about Mr. Adams right. and saying he had a wife that danced herself to death. And uh, let's see, I'm trying to think. Oh, I'm trying to think of the uh, they they said her maiden name was Molly Black, and that she came from Laurel County. And that's that's really that's really all of it. I mean, um, she. I'm trying to. This, she was also. She's been called other things, other names. Right. Okay. Uh, some say her last name was Sewell, which is also connected to the uh, the Laurel County story that Rupp that comes from supposedly comes from Rupp. I see. Right. Okay. But in the end, it, it's a, a, a big mystery. That's that's it. To still to this day, she's buried as unknown, and no one has um, has challenged it to you know to finalize it. To, to there's no there's no definitive proof. Right. Okay. To, to any of the tales. Well, and, and basically, she came there. She showed up at, at one night, and she signed in, and she danced. She said she was waiting for someone 
and she danced and she danced and um, she died in a young man's arms and the people didn't uh, have a clue what to do so they buried her and marked the grave wow well I was reading actually um, everybody who's listening to this they can go to uh, YouTube and they can they can uh, actually see it in real time well not really real time but they can watch it for themselves uh, yeah, yeah the, I'm sorry the, the, video I made, the video I made um, yes Right. Uh, you can search. You can you can put in Will Trib. I think that's a, is that right? Is that what you go by on there? That's my, my YouTube channel's name is Will Trib, and um, the videos I, they're on YouTube. There are a few other places on, on other channels. Um, I'm very Googleable. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Let me uh, try to read some of this without trying to slaughter it too much. Um, but this was on the caption below your video. It says on an un- uh, right. unspecified date in the late 1800s. A young woman checked into the Harrodsburg Springs Hotel in a small town uh, of Kentucky. She used the false name Virginia Strafford, daughter of a prominent judge, as you were saying, in Louisville, Kentucky, and uh, no one knew her true but no one knew her true identity. Uh, they, rec- they recalled that she was quite beautiful. That night, as music played in the ballroom, the girl came downstairs and began dancing with various partners. The young men of the town eagerly lined up to have a chance to dance with her. Uh, the girl danced passionately, and uh, at the end of the night. Her, her final partner realized, that, to his horror, that the young girl had literally died in his arms. Uh, the shock, uh, shocked staff and guests held a funeral for the mysterious girl, and she was buried in the hotel's property. Uh, the hotel is gone now. Uh, it burned down in the 50s. Uh, well, more than 50 years ago, that's what it was, so it was probably the 60s. Um, right. Let's see, although the grave remains, in, uh, although the grave remains are in now what it's a public park as you said there's a metal marker over her uh, resting place that reads unknown this is quote unquote unknown uh, hallowed the husband hallowed and hushed uh, be the place of the dead step softly bow head uh, many claims the girl uh, still returns to the site in the hotel she has been seen lingering in the moonlight slowly dancing and twirling to the music that she can only hear uh, still recalling the night from so long ago uh, and as you said, you know, it was. It goes on to describe where uh, Harrodsburg is, you know, a little uh, south uh, west of Lexington. Right. And then it, and it talks about actually, well, well, I was talking about the Adolph Rupp uh, version of it where he supposedly finished that. Uh, but with that, I'm going to go ahead and play this and let everybody pl- uh, listen to it, okay? So bear right. with me just a second. Here we go. This is going to be the ghost of Graham Springs, and this is read by Gary Burbank. Uh, would you like to tell anybody about, about uh, who Gary Burbank is? Um, well, Gary Gary is a very talented um, radio personality. Uh, uh-huh. he, he's, um, I guess, regional for the most part in uh, Kentucky, Cincinnati, areas, Tennessee, and um, he was the voice. He's known, I guess, best as um, for for his voice characters characterizations uh-huh. and uh, Earl Pitts. He did Earl Pitts on and his most syndicated um, radio. Um, voice, I, I don't know what you call it, but he, it's the most syndicated uh, ever. Right. And uh, last year he was inducted into the Radio Hall of Fame with Howard Stern. Very nice. So here it is, William S. Tribbles, uh, The Ghost of Graham Springs, read by Gary Burbank. Hallowed and hushed be the place of the dead. Step softly, bow head. The grave of a girl whose name is not there, of beauty bold and flaxen hair, who came but briefly, she stayed to dance, maybe by reason, maybe by chance. In haunted meadow, what is her name? On the gentle breeze, blowing, settling the grain. Harmonic concerto, her song in the rain, a grave for a girl, is her name young last lost and the lumbering ages I absolutely love that it is oh, so yeah, great Gary is brilliant he, he put he put um he put in, uh, uh, he he did that so well. I can never read the poems I write as well as uh, some of the people 
that, that I've been able to work with so far. Oh, and um, I think it, it, it's wonderful because people can resonate, the poem resonates better, you know, something so talented. Wow, that's a, it's, a hand in. it's so beautiful. And you, you, you are very talented, William. You really are. And, and that poem is just amazing. Yeah. Really like that. Yeah, absolutely. But do you have any plans for the future? As in, uh, I mean, uh, where we could like, I mean, obviously you said you're gonna come back to the states. Uh, is there any place sure. that you may be reading uh, some of your poems that people can come and like check out, or maybe some we have, we do have. Uh, I, I, I'm guessing a couple, several thousand uh, listeners in Europe as well. So I mean, if you'd want, you can, uh, you know, say what's going on there as well for you. Well, as, as far as here goes, in the immediate future, um, I'll be in Sweden and Denmark in June. And then, um, like I said, I, I'm coming back to the States. I've missed out on so many opportunities this just since the new year. And um, I'm hoping to um, travel and, and do readings and anything else I can do. And, um, I missed the uh, sea time on the Cumberland this year. Yeah. I, I was invited to read there. I had a piece out in um, Pine Mountain Sand and Gravel, uh, which had something to do with Apple Shop and, and of course, the sea time on the Cumberland. But I missed it, of course, because I'm here. So I'm really looking forward to getting back. Uh, I, I, I'm always connected to Kentucky, and I always spend a lot of time there. So wonderful well actually like i said a moment ago when you come back let us know we'll absolutely we have you in the studio sure. definitely well, would like to have it when a book comes out an autographed copy absolutely oh yeah yes, I, yes. I, I, i'm 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 so i'm so excited i've been trying very hard to get a book out but i've wanted to do i wanted to do something locally like as in the the appalachian mm-hmm. region and um so so i haven't i haven't just wanted to rush into publishing it because I have a collection that is Appalachian um, inspired I guess you'd say and, and so I'm looking forward to that because it, I, I'm hoping it'll be easier from when I get back to the States and I can I can actually go and visit and, and meet the people instead of traveling from the internet right and uh, you know long distance and all yes oh I'll tell you this as well uh, in college I had a class called Appal- Appalachian Literature and oh, yeah. my teacher would absolutely love to have you in there as well, I am sure. I could talk with her as I, well, and you could read for the class. I count myself as Appalach- Appalachian, and um, on my, uh, my Poets and Writers, poetsandwriters.org, uh, made a page for me uh, with some of the publications I've been in, and there's a part of it that asks you um, what, what you, um, oh, what's it called, what you... Um, your, your, I don't know what to call it, but one of the answers was Appalachian, and, and I, I count myself as that, if that's a thing. Very <laughs> great. That's, that's amazing. <laughs> but uh, about the poem, the, um, the Ghost of Graham Springs, um, there are many people that have written about that, and like you read from the, um, the, uh, the uh, descriptor on the video, I took that, most of that from the um, Find a Grave online. Oh, wow. Yeah, I mean, and that's the generic story. That's the one you'll you'll find it over and over and over again. That's been re re put and re wrote and restated, and it pretty much sums it all up, right? But there there are a lot of articles out there, and a lot of stuff about Christopher Columbus Graham, who who started the uh, spring. Very nice. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's a very it's one of it's a Kentucky mystery, right? Exactly. It really is. Um, are, so when you come back to the States, are you planning to go back to Europe as well, or are you going to stay here in the States? Uh, I don't know, honestly. I, I hope to stay for a while. I okay. Mean, um, you know, at least a couple of years. Right. Well, I, see, the I only think... reason I was asking is, uh, do we have a place with you if we come to Europe and investigate? <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. Oh, yeah. Um, this, this probably isn't the best country unless unless you could really do your your research. Mm-hmm. But um, of course, Germany and Austria is right next door, and and here I, I was interested in such things. And when I got here, I asked everybody about myths and you know ghost stories. And, and the, the standard story you get is, "Oh, we don't believe in that." Right. Like, totally. They they just do not have it. Right. You could always uh, be no, an honorary member. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, 
<laughs> now, if, if you go if you go further east and you go into Romania, of course, yes. everybody knows the yes. mythology there is is amazing. They still have vampire uh, uh, issues pop up. <laughs> oh, do they now? <laughs> yes. Yes. Love that. Love not, that. Not so long ago, some guy staked his brother-in-law. You oh, know. No. <laughs> Oh, geez. Oh, he was dead. He was dead. But it, it made the news because, they, yeah, they staked it. Well, I, I do know uh, that in that area, uh, they used to um, uh, stake the, the their loved ones while in the casket already right, passed right. away just to, to make sure. <laughs> yeah, and it still that still comes up. It really does. Wow, that's unbelievable. Well, William, we'll probably go ahead and cut on out, but we do appreciate you calling tonight, and we do oh, look forward to having you when you come in the States. Just let us know when you're here, and we will have you in the studio. Sure. Thank you. And Absolutely. It's always a pleasure, man. I, I, I love your guys. Thank you very much. William, thanks again for calling, and uh, like uh, I said, anybody wants to follow him, you can do you. He's very Googleable, as he said. <laughs> I'm very Googleable, and, and, and I'm on, I'm on the, the Facebook and, and most other social uh, sites, Twitter, all that, you know. Awesome. William S. Trevell. I'd yeah. hate to Trevell. see what would come up if somebody Googled me. <laughs> <laughs> it truly was a great honor to hear from a great poet. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, it, it's, it's an honor. It's, it's great to be called a great poet. <laughs> you truly are. All right. Well. Blessed, you know. All right. Well, we Pleasure. sure appreciate you again, okay? All right. And thank you, guys. It's, it's always a pleasure. Thank you, buddy. We'll see you next time. Right. Bye. See you. Bye. Wow. I, I, seriously, I love, absolutely love that poem. It was really nice. I like that. Yeah, uh, and, and I know it's very late for him being in Hungary or Budapest, so I mean, I know that it's, he's kind of right up to do this just to just to be on here, and I'm absolutely, we're going to have him on when he comes back into the States. So. <laughs> but yeah, we're having a lot of technical difficulties. I'm glad we got through uh, that with William. Um, and like I said, you know, you guys can, you know, Google him, and you can find anything and everything about him. And like I said, he's he's a really great guy. He's he's been you know a friend of ours for a long, long time, and we appreciate that. But with that, we're going to try to get him out of here before anything before this board blows up. But anyway, uh, we want to thank everybody for listening tonight. We want, again, we want to thank William for calling in. Uh, this has been the Paranormal Experience here on ninety one point three The Gap. Uh, join us uh, next Thursday, and every Thursday from eight until nine or eight until ten, depending on what we have in and who we have what we have going on so uh like i said thanks again for listening and remember if it's out there we'll find it